And here we are again, we're here to talk about Guild Wars 2, ArenaNet's Net's uh, MMORPG. And, well, uh, this was a little bit awkward because you haven't actually played it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've been living with this for weeks, <laughs> months almost, of, of being, being uh, picked on for not having played Guild Wars 2 when Banked, of course, visited ArenaNet to, to play it. Yes. As an MMO nub, what, what's your first kind of impression of, of, of Guild Wars? Well, well, I mean, first of all, you know, uh, MMOs are, are kind of, uh, you know, they have a certain structure and, you're, you know, it's, it's something that you learn when you play it and, and it's a little bit hard to get into. I think that Guild Wars 2, although it is an MMO, an MMORPG in the traditional sense, uh, where, you know, it's not that different. I mean, sometimes when you hear about it, it's like, oh, that's going to be completely different from an MMO that we've heard of. It's not that different. I mean, sure, it's all event-based and all of that, but there's still some sort of quest structure in there that you will be familiar with. Yeah. So it's not, it's not completely different. But that said, it's much more organic and fluid and sort of... You, can, you understand the world, what you're supposed to do by, by experiencing it. Yeah. Instead of, of, of knowing to look for a guy with a quest, question mark or an exclamation mark over his head or, or whatever, you know. We'll, be, we'll get lost. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, there, on the map you will still know exactly where to go yeah. to, to sort of complete your personal story, which is, you know, the way that, that the story in Guild Wars will... will will unfold, but uh, yeah, other than that, there will be a lot of events going on that will, you'll see and, and that will just, you know, you will go there because the, the beauty of it is that if you participate in an event and you do sort of a, the minimum required to help out in that situation, you'll get 100% XP, 100% loot. And everyone who, who does this will do that. And the events scale up if there's a lot of players. So you will have all incentives in the world to go and help out other people. And, and that's why ArenaNet calls it the first truly cooperative <laughs> MMO ever. And, uh, you know, that's bold words. Very then, bold words. Uh, bold words. Bold. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it really, it really works in, in reality because you will group together just organically be because of this. And you, you will see things happening and you will help people out. And it may even be in their personal story. Yeah. Just things going on, and you'll be nearby, and you, you know, might as well help out. So I think the sh the way you play the game will change a little bit. Instead of sort of having a laundry list of these are the quests I need to do, or this is a raid I want to do, or this is we need to group up, we need to be organized. You can actually just jump in, play it for one two hours, have a you know have the experience you're supposed to have, and, and go out of it, and you know have a a cooperative and, and social experience without going through all the layers that you would normally do in, in an MMO. Although, you know, there's going to be guilds in Guild Wars. Uh, you know, it would be kind of weird if it wasn't, but, you know, uh, it, it certainly certainly has that casual level, la layer on it, where a, an MMO noob like me can, can enjoy it for shorter or longer periods of time without actually investing all of that time into sort of, you know, learning the structure of the game and, and you know, yeah. playing your part of it. So. One, one thing, um, first of all, it's interesting to see, uh, as you said, uh, uh, well, truly the first cooperative MMO. That's kind of a <laughs> uh, Rift and uh, Warmer Online had similar kind of things going on. Very, of course, the events is much more. There's mm. more of them. They, they take up the entire game in a way that Public Quest and Warhammer didn't, and the Rifts don't do in Rift. But uh, what, what's also one of the things that usually gets in the way of... of for, for new players that haven't played MMOs before, that you come in, even even in games like World of Warcraft or any of those like more casual or easy easy uh, experiences, uh, is gameplay. There's a lot of, of um, misconceptions about gameplay or, or or the stereotypical MMO gameplay. Mm. Click on a click on an enemy, press one, two, three. Yeah. Do your. Uh, how did that feel? How did the actual you know well, I mean, fighting uh, fighting yeah. mobs stuff like that? How did that feel? I mean. If, if you see, I mean, I can, I can say it like this. I mean, there is, it's, it's an MMO at, at its yeah. core. You're, you're fighting it like it's an MMO. 
course, Guild Wars has its skill system and all of that, and it's much more visual this time around. So you will get visual cues on how to do, you know, things like putting up a firewall and then shooting arrows through it, and you'll have fire arrows coming through on the enemy. Uh, and it is, uh, you know, and, and you know things like the thief that really does a, a very interesting take on how sort of things. Uh, that it, that has uh, that that class doesn't have any cooldown on its abilities. Instead, it has to manage a, an initiative bar. So what you can do is like you can jump in, do a lot of a lot of damage, short, and then jump out and then recharge your in initiative bar. And then, so the gameplay overall is you know it's like MMO, but y you probably have to be a little bit more reactive in how you play it. And and you know there is auto attack. You can. You can toggle that on and or off, uh, but uh, then you have your different skills. And, and the thing is that when you switch, you can equip two uh, weapon sets, and you can switch with, between them in, in real time. There's a little cooldown, but it's not that long. But that means that you can have quite a quite a different uh, skill skills equipped with, between the different weapon sets, and. Um, and that in turn makes you f very flexible in combat and, and you will be able to develop tactics that are a little bit more proactive than, than what would normally be the case in an MMO where you have your, you know, you go to how to, you know, inflict as much damage per second as possible or, yeah. you know, whatever you're doing and what, whatever role you're playing. So it's a little bit different in that sense. We're also very interested in, in events like this, and that goes for MMOs and it goes for all kinds of games. Of course, the demos that we're shown usually very, um, they're very uh, either linear or very controlled. Uh, but it was fun to see both you and Nick, who is a cameraman who went to, uh, to Seattle with you, uh, coming back home and seeing people that don't usually play MMOs were actually excited mm. about Guild Wars too. Yeah, any, any particular reason why you felt like, okay, this is. I'm having this much fun with it that I, I might actually. You know, first of all, it, it was a well, uh, well prepared demo. I yeah. think uh, a lot of MMOs that you try in a previous stage uh, suffer. You know, the previews suffer from being ill planned. You now this time we got to play uh, a starting zone, starting zone of the Norn, and then we got to play level 27 way further on into the adventure where we got to play a few events and. Uh, uh, you know, a simple event first, where just a village got attacked by uh, by centaurs, and you know we'd had to rally up and, and shoot uh, or kill uh, eight eight waves of them, and uh, then a, a much more tough one with the pirates that we really struggled, with. and we actually had to, actually a developer had to jump in and and, and help us out in that one because we were getting our asses kicked, but. Uh, that in that event, uh, uh, pirates have taken over a, a town or a village, and they set fire to all the buildings. And you, you have to take out the pirates, and then you know uh, cleanse the fires. So um, it's it's interesting. And and what's really interesting, but what you what we couldn't experience, of course, is how these events will change the world, and how that will sort of create a dynamic layer to the world. And that's really interesting to see. And and the developers were really they were talking a lot about how how much stress that puts on them to have to, you know, build the world so that all eventualities can fit, you know, whether a, a village gets, uh, you know, completely, you know, uh, raided by, uh, by a, a, a set of, you know, whatever, and then, and, or if it, if it stands still and holds it and, and how that affects everything around it. It's like a chain of events that it can be set in. Um, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's uh, something interesting. And I think hopefully that will keep the world sort of fresh for the players all, all throughout if it's, if it's deep enough, that system. So it's not just one or two things that changes back and forth, uh, that it actually sort of molds the whole world and that it can change over time. Then that's really interesting and something that, that will really uh, help keep people you know, on their toes when they're you know, mm. treading in familiar areas. So. So, uh, but but going back to what you asked us, I, I do think that it's it's more accessible than than most MMOs, and it's very immediate, and and uh, it uh, it has that sort of quick action, you know, that gratification of, of just you know performing your actions and it being very immediate and very visual, uh, and um, 
also think that they have some classes that really appeal to to other kinds of players than than what you would normally see in an MMO, and especially like the thief that was very different from from how you'd play normally in an MMO. I think um, I think I think that's mainly what it was, but. Um, it's also, it's, it's such an ambitious game and the artwork is just beautiful. The world that they've created, it's just, you know, oh, yeah. visually stunning and, and, you know, we're suckers for great graphics. So <laughs> that, that has a lot to do with it. And it, it was actually very funny because they, they, they told us that they're developing the game with uh, 8600s 8, as the minimum. Uh, and so all the developers actually run the game on 8600 graphic cards and they're finding it hard to find them these days. So... Um, you know, you will, you will have a be more beautiful game, of course, if you have a better graphics card, mm -hmm. but uh, that was kind of interesting because it's still a very, very, very pretty game to look at, even though it's not, you know, we didn't see it on the maxed out, at least not on the developers. I mean, the, the things we were playing on, we were playing on pretty good rigs, but, yeah. you know, so, so that was interesting. And we got to see some, some really spectacular uh, cities that, you know, weren't in the part of the game that we were playing, but, uh, that really stood out. Uh, there was a nautical town that we got to see, and there was some Solvari cities that we got to see that were really, really beautiful. So um, that is also something that I think will appeal to fans of any genre of game. Okay.